We have D-Day by Anthony Bever, The Battle for Normandy. Okay, this book came out in 2009, and I wasn't excited to read it at the time. I really like Anthony Bever as a popular historian, and I'd read his books on Stalingrad and the Battle of Berlin. And so, and Normandy was kind of, um, I'd, I'd already read multiple books on, on it and Operation Overlord. And so the, probably the best book would be Overlord by Max Hastings, which, um, until I read this book, I would have said it's the best book on the subject, but it, it is a really cool subject. Uh, the fighting in Normandy. Uh, the book covers the Normandy uh, campaign and the liberation of France and uh, Paris. But the, uh, I mean, you, you think it, it's such a, you know, you it's like the most popular, when you think of World War II, you think of like Normandy and D-Day and stuff like that. But uh, this book, as usual, Andy Bever does a really good job of finding kind of new angles to look at things and new facts that people maybe have overlooked that weren't necessarily, it is, it's not necessarily revisionism. It's, uh, it's just fine. Like bringing new things to light that have been more or less overlooked, but is out there. And some of the stuff he presents, He's not too, he isn't even um, sold on for like, for instance, a, a good part of the book, one of the, one of the themes of the book is that France was kind of seen as like an Axis country at the time, quasi, and uh, especially a lot of the troops, U.S. troops thought so. And so there's a lot of anecdotes about, uh American soldiers who are seeing, um, who are reporting like, uh, French women who are like, uh, fighting and the civilians, uh, French who are like fighting on the side of the Germans and things like that. And Bever, uh, he doesn't necessarily believe this stuff, but he, you know, it's, it's notable that th this stuff is being reported anyhow. And just these facts are, uh, this kind of information is worth uh kind of diving into the the big things with um let's say departing from Max Hastings book Overlord where a good theme of that book is that the the Germans were like the the best uh troops and that everywhere they met the western uh, any allied troops they were um they'd outfight them uh more or less but still like um be uh they, they they'd end up losing out in the end but um just their numbers didn't necessarily win the day and so he he points out a lot of different things max hastings in his book about like um uh he's always bringing up and he brings up like American um, reports, like army official studies and stuff like that, that show this stuff. And something interesting is that actually uh, the troops that landed on on the beaches, the, like the first wave, were on average an inch shorter than every other uh, American troop. And Hastings considered this a pretty good... Um, indicator of overall fitness and basically a sign that they'd uh they had kind of used uh drafty cannon fodder purpose purposely for like the first waves going in and uh he goes into a lot of stuff like that and it, it doesn't present the best uh look for that the allies who, who who do win in the end obviously but but that's a good theme of Hastings' book. Bever's book, 
doesn't it doesn't necessarily like directly um challenge but it presents an alternate like he he argues first off that the german troops uh that that were in normandy that it it was a much stronger force than than actually was was in the in the east and that the best german units were actually facing the western allies at the time which helped out with uh the soviet operation Bagration. but the uh so i mean probably the the most powerful single formation being the first ss panzer corps in normandy but the uh he also argues that the 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 u.s troops weren't were actually i mean in a way if if you have like um i mean the americans are just bombing everybody to bits and are, are you could kind of see you get a good picture of like um how you might conduct a, a breakthrough so which is why this is kind of relevant now in particular where they're calling in like massive airstrikes i mean just taking out grid squares but the germans don't they don't even have a four engine bomber to uh to compete with that and so in, in this book um bever's book it 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 pre presents a lot of kind of vivid pictures even where like uh the hitler youth are facing against um these bombers coming in and they're joking that there there's like a four engine bomber for for every one of them for every uh grenadier and Bever points out that it's actually uh fairly accurate that there <laughs> there was something like that coming against them but i mean these uh these strikes would just completely take out grid squares at a time where uh like there are german paratrooper units that are just buried just from the bombing and i mean you i'd say you would argue that this is just a, a more powerful a superior force <laughs> you could say you would just say that the u.s put different resources into different different things he just looked at things a different way and uh bever points out that actually uh the better uh, american units like uh 82nd airborne 101st airborne and the second armored division were uh actually these these are uh, like really elite formations that had on would outfight uh even the best german units like ss das reich and stuff like that so actually the better there were better american infantry units that that would outfight german units and that i mean as shocking as that is <laughs> the to some people to to say uh I mean, you just you you look at the facts. The uh, Bever Bever's book, these kind of books, his his style is a lot like Max Hastings' style. If you if you're familiar, where it's a lot of anecdotes pulled from from here and there, and um, so and and a lot of it is the uh, is secondary sources. But I, I think that Bever does a good job at pulling these sources from. Here and there, like uh, he he brings up that the Germans had they after the July twenty, they had something kind of like uh like political officers, like national socialist political officers, in the uh, in the German army. But the, the source for that, I checked the source because I thought that's interesting. But it's Richard Evans. It's a Richard Evans book. So it's not firsthand a primary source. Nevertheless, Bever is a great author. I I've read like all his books. And um I I think this book is if you read like um Stalingrad or Battle of Berlin, you you might have felt the same and uh skipped this one and figured you've already read books on uh, d-day or normandy or so forth or you're or you're just abundantly familiar with the amount of media covering it 
but it brings up a lot of um, really interesting uh, details just about how the fighting was conducted. Like the uh, the German SS, the the Adolf Hitler division, the first SS, they uh, he, he points out that they weren't considered the best marksmen, and that where they where they really excelled was in things like booby traps and also in in the way that they fell back in the defense, which is things that they'd learned on the Eastern Front. They where they're just um they would prepare, you know, they'd plot out, they would, they would know that the Americans are going to fall into their old trenches and they would kind of prepare the battle space for them to fall into it just by plotting out, um, you know, firing lanes and where they're, and just plotting everything out for artillery ahead of time and just putting booby traps everywhere. And this was, uh, the work of, this was elite kind of field craft work and just kind of why these were such uh, hated troops to go up against because <laughs> they they really were good at um, all this stuff. Like they excelled at all, all these things that weren't necessarily like it, it. Maybe they weren't the best shots <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, the Americans had they often had better shots. But but these are the kind of the things they excel at. And then it covers in good detail like the, the Cobra breakthrough. So it, it gives a good picture, I, I'd say, especially of, of how how units like Second Armored operated where, where they are um, like setting up blocking positions and things like that. And trying trying to bracket trying to bottle the German army in, and they did this successfully. But the uh, it it gives a very good just picture of, of all the fighting and how like uh, the hedro hedros all kind of were. This is familiar to you, and so forth. But it de it details kind of how other operations like uh, the British Goodwood uh, failed. And uh, I mean, you get a good picture of how um, the the U.S. especially used close air support uh, to break through. Also, so certain things he he kind of brought up to dispute just factually, like um, that a lot of the uh, the fighter bombers, like the the rockets that they they shot, actually weren't that effective against. Uh, tanks but they they would cause tankers to bail out just by being freaked out by these uh rockets but ju just if you look at the numbers they were they were less effectual as you might have been led to believe if if you're um someone who reads a lot, a lot of world war ii type stuff anyhow if if you like whether you are or not i i think this book is um i'd recommend this book it, it's just kind of uh, I, I mean it, it, it's a fun it's a fun read but it gives a good picture especially if you if you're curious about the fighting in normandy and you could apply that to say the fighting today where you, you're maybe looking at offenses that are looking for a, a breakthrough as we are <laughs> right now on the eastern front um maybe i'll cover that uh, shortly, there there is a there is a a good offensive underway right now, and the uh, it looks like the the mechanized units have reached the uh, these fortified lines of the Russians. The Ukrainians have reached their lines, but we'll see uh, if and when a, a breakthrough is achieved. But it should uh, it should look something like I I would expect like the cobra operation where you're i mean what we have now is in miniature for everywhere like the offenses now are nothing like like the battle of kursk or something which took place not not that far away the numbers are, are nowhere near um not just because people don't field the the same kind of armies they did at the time but you you can get a good picture either way in miniature of, of how this stuff can be uh conducted
this is very uh it, this gives a very modern uh feeling picture just reading how uh they coordinated the these operations and so forth it, it, it is really detailed stuff it's really colorful stuff it, it gets into all the the nitty-gritty it covers how uh ss units were influenced by their experience on the on the eastern front in russia that they you know and they brought these kind of uh hardened mentalities as well as uh skill to the uh to the west but it it really argues against uh a lot of what, what people the picture people give now oh the russians actually like won the won world war 2 and i actually the most uh, powerful german formations were actually in in the west and this was a, a critical and frankly it's the the us that that won world war 2 despite what anyone might want to say these are the facts and if you want to if you want to dispute that you should you should read this book before before you uh or 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 read you know something like it but, but this this would be a good start either way anyhow um that's d-day that's anthony bever um I'll probably try to cover more of his books. Like I said, I, I've read like all of his books. And, uh, but I, I think this one might be overlooked just for that reason. A lot of people have read Stalingrad or Battle of Berlin. But this one is, I, th I think it's the best book I've read on the Normandy fighting. And the Normandy fighting is, is cool. Like it's it's famous for for a reason. It is a, It is like a, a pretty it's a pretty crazy battle but but it, it and it shows a lot of the the mentality of the the americans going in and how the the paratroopers and so forth were really you know they they were trying to prove themselves and they they wanted to fight a, a good battle so they're they're very aggressive going into it and they had a very american mentality this is a, a british author but it, it's it's a book i think that argues in favor it argues in favor of of the u.s troops and it actually is pretty critical of the british and that the british weapons and tactics and and uh the british were were low were much more that were more low morale going into the and they, they weren't really feeling it and they had you know, they they had even their officers who had to lead them by the nose weren't weren't the most stellar, and their weapons weren't the best. But I think the Americans look really good just in these battles. Um, anyhow, I recommend this book and all uh, and all of Anthony Bever's books. All right.